this video is going to be primarily on the, the theory behind uh, these things called related rate problems. It's a very popular um, calculus one type of uh, problem. Um, and fair warning, um, a lot of this stuff may not make total sense until you actually see some examples. And we're not going to do any examples in this video. Uh, we'll walk through some examples in, uh, in subsequent videos. This, this video primarily is just meant to kind of describe the idea behind related rates problems and kind of the approach to to solve them so um, here's a typical setup this is this is a, a traditional word problem and uh, they will give you some real life situation and we'll, we'll talk about what some of those might be in just a minute um, but this real life situation will have some something dealing with area or volume or or something that's static that, that has no movement to it um, it's going to require some sort of like area formula or volume formula pythagorean theorem or you know something like that and there's going to be some some sort of equation that governs these interrelated quantities you know like the uh, the area of a box is length times width times height nothing's moving you just if you're given a length a width and a height you multiply them to get the area so they're all interrelated okay but then from that static equation motion comes into play that's why we that's why we call these related rates problems so uh, if, you know if you have a balloon that's in the shape of a sphere and the static equation is volume equals four thirds pi r cubed and that's static if you were given a radius of the balloon you could say what its volume is somebody then will begin blowing it up at a certain rate so that's where the rates come in now um you know when you think about it most of your examples of word problems from middle school or, or early high school were probably you know as most people say pretty boring well there, there's a reason for that the reason they were so dry was because usually motion wasn't present and here's here's why we didn't include motion uh such a long time ago is when you have motion you you have a rate which comes from taking a derivative you know you don't have miles you have miles per hour and so when you have rates and derivatives then you start getting into calculus which is why primarily up until now things have, have stayed still but now we're going to be blowing up balloons and uh, dropping pebbles in water to create ripples and ladders are going to be falling you know down a wall etc cetera, etc cetera. lots of common scenarios so um, when this motion is present we're going to need to take derivatives of the static equation with respect to time you know to see um, not just you know the the uh, radius and in inches of a balloon but you know it's increasing it's a certain amount of inches per second or inches per minute so we'll have that derivative present and then they'll ask you something some some quantity and this varies problem to problem they might want to know the rate of change of the volume they might want to know the rate of change of the area um, who knows that it could all differ but one of those quantities in that derivative formula they will ask you for. Now the good news is, is, um, is that out of all five, six, seven, eight, ten quantities or ten unknowns, they'll have to tell you or you'll be able to find everything, and I can promise you everything except the one quantity that's missing. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Okay, so what are some of these typical problems? I'll just run through a few just to kind of help you wrap your mind around this. Uh, a very common one deals with balloons. The volume of a sphere is V equals uh, four, thirds, um, four thirds pi R cubed. And so that's your static equation, you know, but if somebody has a, you know, a balloon like this, then you blow it up and this radius starts to increase you know, starts to increase over time. And so they might ask you about the rate of change of the volume, right? Now, just real quickly, how do you take a derivative of something like this to see rates uh, with respect to time? Now, for these type of problems, we're going to make heavy use of implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation, if you recall, was when you're differentiating one variable with respect to a different variable, which is why this is typically taught right on the heels of the sections on implicit differentiation, um, as well as chain rule is often helpful for this stuff as well. So here we go. How would you differentiate uh, a volume term with respect to time t? Well, you'd simply say that it's one, right? The derivative of a, just a variable like x would be one. 
So in this case, it'd be one, but we follow it with a dv dt, like implicit differentiation, because we're differentiating a variable other than little t. And on the right-hand side, the four-thirds pi or con is a tag-along constant. So r cubed, the derivative of r cubed, the three would come down, cancel with the three and the four-thirds, and you get four pi r squared. That, that would be the derivative, but again, because you're differentiating an r with respect to time, you'd follow that with a, a residue, a leftover of dr dt. Okay? And so then they'll give you some quantities. They'll say, all right, the radius of your balloon is increasing at a certain rate of inches per minute. Um, what's the rate of change of volume when the radius is 10 inches? You know, something like that. Well, you, you have 4 pi. Now you have r squared and the rate of change you can find the missing unknown quantity. Usually there's only one missing unknown quantity. I'm going to go through a little, little quicker through the last ones. Uh, ripples in a pond. This is a very popular one. Uh, you have a big pond. Somebody drops a rock in it and it starts to create ripples, but the ripples move outward at a certain rate. So we know, you know, for instance, the area of a circle is pi r squared. And so you could take the derivative with respect to time. So dA dt, the change in area over time, would be 2 pi r, the 2 comes down, times dr dt, implicit differentiation again. Different, um, the derivative of one variable with respect to a different variable. Um, ladders, this is a very popular problem, probably the most popular problem. Uh, a lot of times you'll have this house and I've never quite figured this out, why ladders would be falling down houses, but nevertheless, they are. Um, you'll have a ladder leaning against a house of a certain length, let's say like a 12-foot ladder, okay? And then you have a variable y that's changing if the ladder's falling, and a variable x is changing. Well, a static still equation that governs these quantities is the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared equals 12 squared. Well, then they might ask you, how fast is the ladder moving away from the base of the wall? Or how fast is the ladder moving down the wall, given some, some sort of conditions? Well, we can differentiate all of this with respect to time. 2x, but follow that with the dx dt, um, plus 2y dy dt equals 0, because the derivative of a constant is 0. And again, what will happen is they'll give you all but one of these quantities. All but one will be provided, and then they'll ask you for the missing guy. All right, I'm not even going to draw a picture of the last one just to speed things along. Baseball problems are very popular. You have the baseball diamond, and then you see all the, the very natural shapes like triangles and whatnot that are made between the base runner and the bases. And they'll ask you, you know, if a runner is running at a certain speed, you know, how fast is a certain distance changing? Again, I, I totally understand if all these aren't quite clicking uh, until we work some of these examples out. Uh, so in closing, let me just give you the steps to solve these in case you want to jot these down. And then we're going to come back and do some examples where we apply these exact steps. Okay, these are word problems, real life problems. Step one, they'll ask you to draw some sort of picture. Um, well, they, they won't even ask you necessarily. We should just do that, even if they don't say it. Uh, if they're talking about blowing up a balloon, draw the balloon. Um, whether your art skills are great or not, just make your best attempt. Next comes that static equation. This is something I, you know, I can't really help you with because it's so different problem to problem. You just have to look. Is it an area, volume, Pythagorean theorem problem? Uh, it could be anything under the sun, but it should be some basic formula that, that you should already know from high school or even middle school in, in some cases. So find some sort of a static, still, no movements, no derivatives equation that relates the, the variables that are present. Next, how do you make the motion happen? How do you reveal the rates that are happening? Well, that's where derivatives come in. This is, this is the calculus step right here. Um, might use the chain rule in a lot of cases because you have so many layers in some of these basic formulas, but it also might use and will use uh, implicit differentiation as well, um, where you are always differentiating variables like A for area, V for volume, little r for radius, all of those with respect to time, T. So just be aware of that. 
All right, um, from here it's very uh, downhill. Plug in the information that they give you and solve for whatever it is that they're asking for. So um, we're gonna now go through a bunch of examples uh, where we work some of these out, but hopefully this at least gets you on the right uh, start.